around the zone for the main event of the evening. It's the rematch, Lara versus Wood 2. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA featherweight championship of the world. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Robin Smith and the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. The supervisor is Mariana Borisova. Introducing your three judges scoring this world title contest from ringside. From England, Howard Foster. From Spain, Jose Ignacio Martinez. And from Panama, Victor Simon. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from England, A-star referee, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set and we are here. This is it. The time has come. I said the time has come! From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring right here in Manchester, England. The fight starts now! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black with the green trim. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. His professional record, 26 victories against three defeats. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He proudly fights out of Gedling, Nottingham, England. Here is the former Commonwealth featherweight champion, the former British featherweight champion, and the former WBA featherweight champion. Of the world, Lethal Lee Wood! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the red trunks with the gold trim. He scaled nine stone, three pounds, 13 ounces. His professional record, 26 victories, two defeats, one draw, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando el orgullo de San Felipe de Jesus, Ciudad de Mexico. Here is the former WBA featherweight champion of the world, Mauricio El Bronco. So referee Steve Gray brings both boxers together for the final instruction. Okay boys, if a cold blade you take one step back. Sinigo break and paso atrás. No punches on the back of the head. No golpes de la parte atrás de la cabeza. Protect yourselves at all times, but I say siempre. Touch goes. A sporting touch of gloves to conclude the final instructions from referee Steve Gray. The two boxers, no animosity, no baleful stare down during those final instructions from referee Steve Gray. And now they retreat to their respective corners and await the opening bell in this immediate rematch where Lee Wood bids to regain the WBA featherweight championship of the world. Go on. And we are underway, 12 three-minute rounds in this somewhat of a bizarre world title fight. Bizarre because in this immediate rematch, the champion, the man who was the champion, lost his title on the scales. And so here we are with Lee Wood, the only man who can regain, who can win the crown tonight because Mauricio Lara wasn't allowed to make the featherweight limit. It's a confident start by Lee Wood, who's wearing white trunks trimmed with green and gold, the Nottingham colours. He's got his name wood embossed on the back and the Nottingham Forest logo on the side of his white waistband. Mauricio Lara wearing red trunks with a black name band on his waistband, predominantly a red and gold waistband. And it's been a confident start by Lee Wood in his first 40 seconds, occupying center ring, moving over the front foot, scoring with a good stab jab to the body. Mauricio Lara fired a counter left hook a few moments ago, but was off the mark. There he made Lee Wood miss. 
by leaning backwards and came back with a counter jab of his own. Lee Wood just takes a left jab after he didn't fully commit to his left jab of his own. The action is in the middle of the boxing ring, both men on top of the logo. And it's a rather tepid start by both boxers, but it's Lee Wood pressing the action in conservative fashion, just applying front foot pressure. And now Maurizio Lara, a figure 12 on the clock face, on the far side of the ring against the ropes, if you consider our commentary position, is at figure five on the clock face. Stab jab to the body once again from Lee Wood, a shot that served him so well. Then a jolting left jab upstairs. Lee Wood has got his right glove in front of his chin. His left hand is moving up and down, varying the height from which he's shooting out that lead left. He just went walkabout and then came back with a terrific thrusting left hand to the body. Up jab on a corkscrew from Mauricio Lara was off the mark, as was then a right uppercut from Lee Wood, followed by a right hook from Mauricio Lara. And it's Mauricio Lara remaining patient, flat-footed. There he shoots out an up jab once again, and he did get through with it. He turned it into a corkscrew by turning his palm to the ring lights, and he found the range. Minute to go in this opening round. Mauricio Lara, counter right hand, dips the knees of Lee Wood, and then he scores with the right hand to the body, but Lee Wood shrugs it off, comes forward, and slams it a right hand to the left flank of Mauricio Lara, and follows it up with a stab jab to the body just above Mauricio Lara's belt line, which is kind of high, I can tell you. The belt line is almost touching the bottom of... Maurizio Lara's pecs, the action resumes, both men listed at 5 feet 7 with identical reach, but Lee Wood gives the impression of being a longer fighter, and he's using his left hand very effectively indeed in this opening round. Lara, dipping beneath the attempted left jab on the edge of range, Wood then peered between high-held gloves, but Lara, very, very patient indeed, takes another scoring jab to the body, his counter right hand attempted upstairs was off the mark, the man who lost his title on the scales. Lee Wood just controlling the distance, using that lead left hand as a measuring stick. He's putting it out there, but then he really commits to a left jab to the body, and it backs up Maurizio Lara. Ten-second clap of sound. Maurizio Lara takes another flicking jab on the forehead, comes forward with a rather crude-looking three-shot flurry. All the shots were inaccurate. inaccurate. Lee Wood claimed his man, and that is the end of the first round, a round where Lee Wood boxed very well indeed. We're going to head down to Bournemouth and get a quick update from Darren Reese in the World Cruiserweight title fight. Well, we've just finished the seventh round here, and Lawrence Akoli has just been deducted a second point for holding. The round ended, and Sugar Hill Stewart was absolutely furious with the referee, Marcus McDonnell. He's still looking at him with his hands in the air like, what have you done that for? But everybody in the Vitality Stadium is booing because of it. Well, what drama down at the Vitality Stadium, but we've just had the first round in this featherweight contest, really, Lee Wood can win the title. Barry Jones, your thought? Well, I thought he did enough to win the round there, Lee Wood, and, and I think he boxed quite well behind the jab. But there were signs again so early on. Lara doesn't look like he's bothered, does he, Anthony? He looks nice and relaxed. It does, it's not so relaxed. I think we're surprised just how patient he was. Lee Wood won the round, but there was two noticeable shots. What landed from out of the biggest shots, but it was a Lee Wood round. Into the second round we go. Lee Wood is already in the prime position of the boxing ring at ring centre. Maurizio Lara just on the edge of centre ring, moving to his left, fired out a left jab, and now he's dipping his knees once again, just bobbing and weaving, comes forward, lost his footing as the two men, their feet tangled on a forward foray, jabbing away without reply from Lee Wood once again. He drops his knees, looking upwards before getting back to his conventional boxing stance his right hand against his jaw his left hand by his belt line now moving in a clockwise direction to his left after moving momentarily before in a counterclockwise deflection and another left hook during an exchange from Maurizio Lara got Lee Wood's attention the two men let shots go at the same time and once again Maurizio Lara has appeared to be more potent there was then an untidy tangle of feet which sent Maurizio Lara to the canvas but signs of his power once again Lee Wood keeping his composure and remaining disciplined is back at long range and using his left hand in very educated fashion indeed he's fencing with it just reaching out there's a jolting left jab that literally sent Maurizio Lara tottering on his heels because he was coming forward to double up the impact and then as he got back into range Lara thrusted out that left hand to the body once again he's using that jab downstairs to very good effect and if if the man who came in at 129.8 pounds above the 126 pound featherweight limit, Maurizio Lara is feeling the effects of carrying that extra weight, then any perceived vulnerability to the body could be exacerbated here. 
Lara, just as he did in the first fight, complaining to referee Steve Gray after he takes an illegal kidney punch. Lee Wood looking for a right uppercut to the body. And Lara just seems to be having trouble with his footing because on several occasions when he's stamped that front foot looking to establish his lead left hand or a backhand, he's lost his footing and has slid off to the left. Beautiful scoring jab to the body once again. He's reddening around the right side, Maurizio Lara. Left-right combination from Lee Wood. Saw the left hand get through. The right hand went over the top of Lara's head because he dipped cleverly at the knees. Lee Wood just backing up, tucking up his temples behind high-held gloves. Attempted shot to the body, then a left hook from Lara was off the mark. Lara turned his back on Lee Wood during a clinch. Steve Gray warns him about that flashing counter right uppercut attempted by Lara, but it was off the mark because Lee Wood lead, used quick feet to back away after scoring with a jab. And there's another jab once again. It's literally stopping Lara in his tracks. Lee Wood using his lead left hand and a right yeah. uppercut has sent Maurizio Lara to the canvas. He's back on his feet. He looks to his corner. Steve Gray told him the mandatory eight count. He crossed himself. Maurizio Lara as though seeking some divine intervention. 20 seconds remaining in this second round. How badly hurt was Mauricio Lara by that peach of a right uppercut and caught by Lee Wood. Ten second clapper sounds now. Mauricio Lara just on the edge of punching range. He's our center ring coming forward. Lead right hand from Lee Wood with his back to the ropes of figure 12 on the clock face. But a terrific second round for Lee Wood is in his bid to regain this title. Dropping Mauricio Lara with a sweetly timed right uppercut. It's a beautiful shot. The shot right up the middle for me. Mauricio Lara's just seemed far too relaxed. And that seems to have woke him up a little bit, but Lee Wood. He's picked up from the first fight, he's stabbing downstairs so well. And what he did also do before the knockdown, landed a fantastic jab that stiffened the legs a little bit of Lara. Wood has got to take huge confidence from that, that he can hurt uh, Mauricio Lara. But listen, I do believe he's recovered and he's a very dangerous man still. Well, I thought Wood started that wrong. Wood had delivered too tentative, did Lee Wood? But then he landed with a good solid jab, he grew in confidence. But what Lara does, when he throws the right hand, he brings that right foot forward and squares his feet up. And Wood timed him lovely, just threw that nice uppercut. Wood seriously hurt Lara, he was off balance, but it was a great shot and a real positive second round there for Lee Wood. The thoughts of former Lassie. world champion Barry Jones and Anthony Million Dollar Crawler here ringside at the Manchester Arena. We're into the third round after Lee Wood sent the man who lost his title on the scales. Maurizio Lara to the canvas with the right uppercut. Lee Wood landed a terrific right hand. And as Lara was coming forward, the top of Lara's head crashed against the chin of Lee Wood, jolting his head back violently. Lee Wood spinning off the line in the pocket, firing a right uppercut left hook. Just takes the time to get beyond punching range and wipe his gloves clean on his white, green and gold trunks. Lara coming forward, lands the right hand to the body and as Lee Wood tried to time up Lara landed a left uppercut half hook half uppercut to the chin Lee Wood on the front foot once again approaching figure three on the clock face is Maurizio Lara he's back now touching the ropes he's bobbing and weaving peering between his gloves Lee Wood remaining poke co composed and a beautifully picked right cross swiveled the head of Maurizio Lara and stiffens his legs once again then he's put on the end of a right jab Right hand scores upstairs from Lee Wood. Lara comes back with two shots to the body. But Lee Wood appearing to operate at an entire, in an entirely lower gear than Lee Wood. Now he's trying to get some urgency into his work and quicken his feet. Stalking Lee Wood across the ring. But Lee Wood moving counterclockwise to his right. Managing the distance very well. There's a counter left hook once again, which causes Maurizio Lara to totter and lose his boxing stance. Leaps forward with a jab from well beyond punching range. Easily evaded by Lee Wood, who then, after Lara missed the shot, tied his man up in a clinch. Another right hand stiffens the legs of Maurizio Lara. And Lee Wood boxing very well indeed. Pot shotting terrifically. Missed from the right hand from Lara is countered by two hard hooks. Slammed into the body by Maurizio Lara. But Lara, just as he was in the first fight, being outboxed, swinging a right hand after a two-shot combination. Left jab, right up, left jab, right hook miss from Lee Wood. So Lara, still dangerous. Minute 10 to go in this third round. And the action is in the middle of the boxing ring. Lara just looking to edge forwards, but Wood with good use of the feet, keeping him on the edge of range. Wood then skips off to his right, counterclockwise before walking back forward into punching range. An exchange of jabs, Wood was to the body. Lara scored to the head. As Lot Wood, long bridging his man. Lara bobbing and weaving on the edge of range, takes another jab to the body and it doubles him over, causing him to jackknife at the waist. And Lara backing up now, moving clockwise to his left, could be walking onto the right hand of Lee Wood. And let's not forget, he possesses plenty of pop and his punches as well. 
Laura tucking up tightly behind high held gloves comes forward with a right hand to the body and a left hook upstairs that again causes Lee Wood to become disorganized so Lara hasn't had much success but when he has landed against Lee Wood he's brought about a reaction can Lee Wood keep his concentration and keep this wonderful measurement of distance going 10 second clap of sound there's a thudding right hand which lands against the gloves of Lee Wood good defense with the gloves from him but it just backed him up a little bit Lara comes forward with a marauding foray Bell sounds Good look around the boxing from Lee Wood once again. We're going to head back to Bournemouth and get another update from Darren Reed. But there's a sense of urgency from Lawrence Okoli because he must realise that he's well and truly down on the scorecards because of a knockdown, then the two deducted points. He's loading up the right hand, not having much luck with it. Willem Smith is getting it on the inside, grabbing hold of him and making sure he doesn't get caught with it. We're going into the 10th here in Bournemouth in just a moment. Well, unbelievable stuff there, seems on there, but the total here tonight and here right now, that was another better round there for Lee Wood. He's scoring in confidence in each round. There was a little sign there, he got caught with the left hook there off, off Lara, but before that, the movement, the confidence, the jab, the little feint before he lets, lets his punches go. I think he's full of confidence oh, tonight, I think. So I thought, listen, another fantastic round. There might have been a reaction from the left hook, but he's just, I don't leave him to do too much because I believe he's in control. So to the fourth round we go, by his own admission, Lee Woody said that he got greedy and a little bit drunk on the success that he enjoyed in their first contest just 98 days ago down in Nottingham. Said that he started to hold his feet and put too much onto his punches. But here he's boxing a wonderfully disciplined fight so far. Maurizio Lara completely flat-footed on the edge of centre ring, approaching figure nine on the clock face. If you again consider that our position is at figure five. Wood backing him up by applying pressure with his feet. He's just using that left hand as a deterrent. There Lee Wood dips at knee, shaping to throw the jab from his kneecap, but he didn't commit to the shot or pull the trigger. The two men just circling one another. It's Lara on the perimeter of the boxing ring, waiting patiently, looking to unload his vaunted power. No punches being exchanged, but the concentration absolute and the deadlock with the stare down was broken by Lee Wood, who came forward with the right hand. He was off the mark. Lara went for a counter punch, and there Lara does score with a left hook to the body, right hand to the head. Now, Lee Wood gets his composure back, but a solid left jab clumps home from Maurizio Lara once again, sh shooting back the head and sending a shower of spray from the curly hair of Lee Wood. Lee Wood on the front foot, right hand clamped against his chin, left hand moving up and down. He's currently around his belt line. Maurizio Lara just above our commentary position. I could read, reach out and touch him, but he's trying to lure Lee Wood. Hard exchange of hooks. Left hook to the body from Lee Wood. Left hook, left hook to the head from Lee Wood. Left hook to the body from Lara. And now there's another jab from Lara. Lee Wood keen to initiate a clinch. Mara, Lara digging away with his right hand to the body. And despite the fact that he must be trailing on the scorecards as Lee Wood scores with a counter, check left hook, landing it, then spinning off the line to his left. There he tries the same shot once again, but a right-left combination to the body of Lee Wood brought about a reaction from the man from Nottingham. The second shot from Lara was solid indeed and just doubled him over momentarily. Minute remaining in this fourth round. And it's a thinking contest. Very few punches being thrown, but both men just on the edge of range. Oh, that's a hard left hand slammed in from Maurizio Lara. It may have strayed low. No complaint from Lee Wood as the two men waltz one another around the ring with their arms entangled. Now they disengage and are beyond punching range. 40 seconds remain in this fourth round. Lara backing up voluntarily towards figure 12 on the clock face on the far side of the ring. Now he's moving to his left, just moving, shaping left and right like a metronome that's on slow-mo. Now he's back touching the rope at figure Three on the clock face, he spins off to his left. Lee Wood continuing to apply pressure with his feet and his presence. Lara just looking to lure that lead from Lee Wood and then look to explode with heavy counters. Heads come together as Lara slams a right hand into the body once again. And there's a right uppercut from Lara while Lee Wood was committing to a shot. Lee Wood takes the shot well, but he's backing up. Lara tries to get busy with an attack to the body, but he's wrapped up by the arms of Lee Wood. And in a very, in a round where there was a very low punch output, Lara landing some solid shots indeed. I think yeah, I thought the bodywork of Lara there was fantastic and I might pay dividends as the rounds go on. Wood was doing a lot of stalking and fainting, but actually wasn't busy enough with his hands for me there, Anthony. Yeah, I thought, listen, I thought Lee would land some fantastic body shots himself, but I'm with you there. It'd be interesting to see how bad the cut is. Lee would has picked up a cut here over his right eye. 
whether that will come into play. But it's um, it's the first round you could arguably give to uh, Maurizio Lara. But there wasn't much in it. There was still a lot to like from Lee Wood. But you just you don't want him to be taking chances. Certainly not exchanging with Lara. But, but, but the thing with Wood is he gets hurt, and he's been hurt a few rounds already in this contest. Yep. His recovery is really good. We've seen oh, that across the corner right. fight. He recovers quick. So you've got to be careful that he doesn't stand up too tall when he does get hit. Yeah, he can't come out high whatsoever. Yeah, get caught again. And I think it's why tactics from Lara to hit the body. So into the fifth round we go, it was Kerry Kays who stepped in between the strands to apply the adrenaline solution and the petroleum jelly to the jelly, petroleum jelly to the damaged left eye of Lee Wood. Not sure whether that injury was caused by a cut or a punch. But Maurizio Lara perhaps enjoying his best round of the contest in the fourth where he had tremendous success with heavy hooks to the body. He's breathing through an open mouth now is Maurizio Lara. Again, the men on top of the logo at centre ring. Lee Wood dips at the knees, feints with the left hand, comes through with a left-right combination, but both punches cannoned off the high-held gloves of Maurizio Lara, who is tucking up like a turtle behind his defences. A right hand pierces his defences, with him standing stock still at figure two on the clock face. He sprints forward, but he's being touched up by the jab of Lee Wood, who got on his back foot and maintained the gap beautifully, shooting out that left hand and scoring with it. There he drops it down and scores to the body. Lee Wood just near his own blue corner. His back touches the ropes of figure 12 on the clock face. Big swing and a miss with the right hook from Maurizio Lara. And Wood intelligently gets back to the space of centre ring and turns the tables on Maurizio Lara, who is now edging towards the blue corner on the far side of the ring. Left right attempted by Lee Wood was off the mark. Lara comes back and lands a heavier in an exchange of jabs. And the left eye beginning to leak blood once again. The damage inflicted at the end of the fourth round just opening up once more. Lee Wood breathing through an open mouth. An angry mouth is developing beneath his right eye. So Lee Wood being marked up in what is a physical contest here. Bleeding from the left eye. The swelling developing beneath his right eye. Comes forward with a jab. Doubles up the jab. Head then body but he's countered by a right hand over the top which increases the flow of blood from that injured left optic that Lee Wood has sustained. One minute 15 remaining here in round number five. Lee Wood on the front foot at centre ring. Lara trying to play counter puncher once again. Switches southpaw momentarily. Now he's back in the orthodox stance but while he was switching feet Lee, Ro Lee Wood took advantage and scored with a left jab to the body. Hard right hook landed upstairs by Lee Wood countered by a two shot salvo downstairs from Maurizio Lara. Lee Wood edging forward now fainting over that front foot it was a convincing fake and coming forward with three shots the second leaping long left hook landed from Maurizio Lara and now he's back near the ropes at figure three on the clock face once again he sprints out of the corner gets to the space of center ring counter left hook then a right cross land from Maurizio Lara against the attempted left jab of Lee Wood final 30 seconds of this fifth round as Maurizio Lara economical with his punch output once again he's at figure 11 on the clock face, sprints out of the corner once again with some wide arcing hooks but didn't really find a range because Lee Wood was effective with his defences with his gloves. Right hand lands to the temple from Lee Wood with Maurizio Lara content to slide across the ropes. He spins back to centre ring does Lee Wood but not before being scored upon with a left jab to the body. Lee Lara comes forward, left jab, left jab right cross penetrates the defences of Lee Wood. Another competitive round of boxing. We're going to head back to Bournemouth and get more act, more updates from the Cruiserweight type, World Title fight. Here's Darren Reese. Well, how Billum Smith hasn't gone down, I don't know. Lawrence Acoli has landed big left hooks, big right hooks, big absolutely everything. But Billum Smith is fighting back. And as I speak to you now, Lawrence Acoli is climbing off the canvas. And Marcus McDonough is counting to eight. He's up on his feet. And that is the end of the bell. End of the round. So, Lawrence Acoli down twice in the fight. He's been deducted two points down in Bournemouth. And he must... His grip on the championship must be in a really precarious position. But back to here in Manchester, Anthony Crawley, your thoughts on that round, the fifth round that's just concluded. That round of four was a very closely fought round. Again, I think we're starting to see the punch output of Lara come higher and higher. And it's crude at times, but it's just when he lands on it. But very close to fought round that. Well, we've just been treated to a replay here on our monitors, which confirmed that the cut sustained by Lee Wood in the fourth round was caused by a clash of heads. So, into the sixth round we go. Both boxers just creeping around the boxing ring. No leaping foot through this portion of the stanza. Their feet just sliding atop the ring canvas. Maurizio Lara looking to get those feet planted into the canvas and unload his heavy artillery. 
It's Lee Wood in the middle of the boxing ring. Lara just moving to his left, comes forward with a rather crude looking left jab, but he still found a way through the defences of Lee Wood and scored. So again, punch output, very economical from both boxers. The thinking is almost visceral. Right hand attempted by Lee Wood, didn't set it up behind a jab, and Lara looked to counter. Beautiful combination, right uppercut to the body, left hook to the head from Lee Wood. Then a left jab, Lara swings and miss, misses with a counter right hand. There's another thrusting left hand just above the belt line from Lee Wood. And Maurizio Lara reddened around his left eye, dipping out of the way of the punches of Lee Wood, making him miss but didn't complete the equation and looked to make him pay. Lee Wood now turns southpaw, the lead legs in vain danger of stepping on one another. Beautiful two-shot combination, left hook, right hook to the body from Maurizio Lara. Lee Wood switches back to the orthodox stance from the port-sided stance that he adopted momentarily. Halfway through this sixth round and again, both boxers just on the edge of punching range. Good left jab landed by Maurizio Lara and Lee Wood keen to hold on as he's Back was approaching the neutral corner on the far side of the boxing ring. Steve Gray separated the two men, and now it's Lee Wood in ring center. Maurizio Lara just posturing like an old school fighter, holding his hands in exaggerated position. Lee Wood attempts a left-right combination, leaning back on the ropes and then catapulting off with an attempted counter was Lara, but neither man was accurate. Scoring left jab to the body, counter right hand upstairs from Lara was off the mark. The left scoring jab came from Lee Wood, and Lee Wood left-right combination of feather-like punches which land upstairs. Maurizio Lara tucking up behind gloves and forearms to repel the right uppercut left hook, but he's in danger of being outworked here is Maurizio Lara through this portion of the round. It's Lara being backed up by a left jab, head, then body from Lee Wood. He's just dropping that right hand now. He was out of range when he dropped that right hand, but remember that was the cause of his demise in their first contest those 98 days ago. 20 seconds remaining in this sixth round, and it's Lee Wood whose greater activity in the remaining in the final minute of this round, for my money, has seen him nick this one. Maurizio Lara must be kicking himself if he lets this round go begging because he's being outworked. There he comes forward, double left jab, right cross, all the shots missed, and did the two shot salvo to the body. But plenty of motion, so plenty of motion from Lara in the closing stages, but not much accurate action. Barry Jones, your thought? I thought it was a really good round there for Wood, a solid jab, and just creating that distance constantly with the feet. Not alone that at the fire back, I think that was a round that he needs to work on more, that was a good round for him. Yeah, I think that was another fantastic round from Lee Wood, as Barry said there. He was very busy. Lara's getting outworked here, and I think his punch output has got to be higher, but when it does come, it's also very crude. Closing stages of the 12th round down in Bournemouth. Let's head back to Darren Rees. You can hear the crowd erupt, me, erupt around me. The Bournemouth crowd think that their man, Billum Smith, has won. Shane McGuigan lifts Billum Smith up as he holds his hands out to the 16,000 faithful here. Hands up in the air, beating his chest. Has he done it? We'll find out in a short while. Well, we'll bring you an update just as soon as we are able. Both boxers up off their stall to answer the bell to begin round number seven here in Manchester. So into the second half of the contest we go. Lee Wood and Maurizio Lara engaging in a physical chess match here there is plenty of thinking precious little punch output both men know the power that the other one possesses but Maurizio Lara in the second half of that sixth round was just outworked for my money and now the action well it's thought more than punches being thrown through the first 30 seconds of this seventh round and it's Lee Wood just maintaining the gap by backing up. Now he's back on the front foot, continuing to tempt and tease with his lead left hand. Lara leaping side to side, but he takes a scoring left jab to the body. Lee Wood is using that shot very effectively indeed. Remember, Lee Wood, the only man who can lift the title tonight because Maurizio Lara was stripped, having been prevented from attempting to make the featherweight limit of 126 pounds after not making a check weight earlier in the week to the satisfaction of the board. Minute gone in this round, beautiful right hand, then a check left hook from Lee Wood, then a scoring jab to the body. Lara tries to come back with a corkscrew jab of his own. And for my money, it's almost as though he's boxing on ice skates because the black boxing boots that he's wearing appear to have a very narrow sole as he takes a right hand to the body, and while it, right hand to the head while at figure nine on the clock face. 
but Lara having trouble with his footing and now he's stationary on the ropes at figure nine in the clock face Lee Wood remaining concentrated didn't get greedy and dancing out his way to center ring is Maurizio Lara coming forward with a rather crude one two slapping with the inside of the glove with the right hand which landed for Maurizio Lara but Lee Wood keeping his composure and his discipline very effectively indeed minute 20 remaining in this seventh round and Maurizio Lara well we question whether being coming in at that heavier poundage 129.8 pounds practically four pounds heavier than Lee Wood whether it will affect his conditioning as he takes a left jab to the body left jab to the head half hook half jab of the long variety from Lee Wood again three shots without reply as Maurizio Lara bobbing and weaving on the edge of range tries a counter left hand but he's hit to head and body by two arcing hooks from Lee Wood who is timing his man beautifully and Maurizio Lara well it's a rather tepid display so far but remember he has the power and the capacity to end the contest with a single shot from either hand particularly that vaunted left hook there he comes forward behind a left jab right cross which scores but after his exertions he's pushing out his mouthpiece and breathing through an open mouth the two men tangle at center ring referee Steve Gray prizes them apart 25 seconds remaining in this seventh round and Maurizio Lara for my money just not busy enough as the two men exchange hurried punches downstairs and it appeared to be Maurizio Lara who got the better of that exchange his best portion of the round because his punches appear to have a greater effect than Lara than vice versa Lara comes back with a Lee Wood comes back with a hard left hook to the body just before the 10 second clapper and now Lara on a front foot for Ray scoring with a double jab right hand to the body let's get the thoughts of Barry Jones at the conclusion of that seventh round I thought Lee Wood absolutely boxed his ears off in that round I thought he was absolutely fantastic the judgment of the distance everything behind the jab didn't make a move until he landed with the solid jab and Lara's boxing like a man an arrogance of a puncher but he's just not doing any work so we're gonna head down to Darren Reese and get the decision in Bournemouth One one twelve, one chill. A draw with one judge. Chris Billum Smith gets it. Majority decision. This has got to be one of the greatest evenings of his life. He was happy to win the British title. He is cruiserweight champion of the world. What a result down there in Bournemouth. The homeboy, Chris Billen Smith, in front of 16,000 fans at the Vitality Stadium, has just re relieved Lawrence Ticoli of his WBO cruiserweight title. Back here in Manchester, 15 seconds gone in the eighth round. And Maurizio Lara, well, he's simply not busy enough. We know about the fight changing power he possesses. There he's lifted off his feet by a left jab to the body as he was looking to come forward. And Lara, well, his timing isn't good. His activity certainly isn't good. And he's in danger of being outworked and outthought by Lee Wood, who's bidding to become a two time world champion in a contest where only he can lift the title tonight because Maurizio Lara was overweight. And I'm really stunned by the passivity being shown by Maurizio Lara, who's put on the end of a left, of a right cross, which came behind a left jab. Lara came forward, but again, his feet slow and not able to close the range. And then while he's waiting, he's touched up by two scoring jabs to the body once more. Hard right hand driven into the body by Lee Wood. And the only time Maurizio Lara attempts to get busy is when Lee Wood looks to fashion a clinch. Referee Steve Gray separates the two. It's Maurizio Lara on the edge of centre ring. And now the two men fighting for that prime piece of fistic real estate in the middle of the boxing ring. Maurizio Lara bobbing and weaving near the heavy jab landed by Lara. But Lee Wood got his boxing stance back beneath him. Another left jab scores from Lara. And the two men exchanging punches. Lara landing the final shot, a left hook to the, to the body. Halfway through this eighth round. But remember, as long as Maurizio Lara is on his feet, he possesses that potent threat from either hand. Long left hook to the body was e to the head was easily evaded, as was the right cross which followed from Maurizio Lara. There appears to be very little snap or speed on his punches, and dare I say it, not much accuracy either. And Lee Wood 
He's not doing much, but he's controlling the distance and outboxing and outworking the man from Mexico. Maurizio Lara standing at figure eight on the clock face, breathing through an open mouth, peering between high held gloves. But he's almost, well, he's presenting about as much movement as a heavy bag in a stiff breeze. There's no work coming from Maurizio Lara at all. Now he moves to his left, continuing to take in big lungfuls of oxygen. Maurizio Lara now edging forwards. Lee Wood keeping the distance between himself and Lee Wood makes it and Mauricio Lara makes his man miss once again coming forward is Mauricio Lara but the double jab short of the mark because of good feet foot movement demonstrated by Lee Wood and again there is no punch output coming from the man who lost his title on the scales and it's Lee Wood giving the impression of making the contest by being on the front foot Mauricio Lara just above our commentary position and another round as he takes a right hand lead from Lee Wood, comes forward and lands with a left hook when chasing Lara across the ring, when chasing Lee Wood across the ring, ends with a burst of punches to the body. But I don't think that's enough to take the round. Another round, Anthony Crawler, where Lara was very passive indeed. Yeah, it was it was a hard round to score. I mean, what very little he did throw though, I feel like did land, so it was a close round to score. However, it's got the punch output has got to be put up. But I think that was a good round for the sense in Lee Wood. He got to take a round off almost because that's the quietest round of the fight there. Switched on, yes, thinking, but it, it was almost a round off. I just think Lee Wood can't believe his luck. I, honestly, guys, you've got, you've got a guy here who can, it, it hurts you with every punch he throws and he decides not to throw any punches. No, punches have an elegance that they can catch you and they can hurt you every time they throw their, let's say, hands go. But he has to force Lee Wood to make a mistake by being busy, Dara. He needs to throw with him and then, and then the gaps will appear. He's allowing Lee Wood to take the pace, to take the space, and, and for me, dominate the fight so far. So just a reminder on this bump and ice of world title action here in the UK that Michael Conlon was stopped in the fifth round in his featherweight title bid against the IBF King Luis Alberto Lopez in Belfast. Steve Gray has just called time. He sent Maurizio Lara to a neutral corner and he's asking for the excessive petroleum jelly which was applied to the damaged left eye of Lee Wood to be removed. Ben Davison doing a good job moving it around but I'm not sure any petroleum jelly was taken away from that left eye injury sustained by a clash of heads at the end of the fourth round and down in Bournemouth Chris Billum Smith has dethroned Lawrence Acoli to become the new WO, WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. A contest where Lawrence Acoli was on the floor twice and had two points deducted for excessive holding. Chris Billum Smith prevailing on a majority decision. Back here in now, 30 seconds gone in the ninth round of this contest. And Lee Wood scoring with a jab to the body, which a few moments before was preceded by a right cross to the head. Lara trying to cut a more dynamic figure now, bobbing and weaving on the edge of range. But he's just been kept at bay by an irritant of a left jab from Lee Wood, who's got his left hand around his belt line. Now he's holding it out like a, an umbrella, just keeping his man at bay with it. There he pushes Lara off with the heel of the glove. And Maurizio Lara trying to commit a right cross did get through and it just brought about a reaction from Lee Wood once again just causing him to lose his balance but then Lee Wood on a wide legged stance back into punching range and he's continuing to control the distance with his lead left hand once again. There he scores with it to the body before spinning off to his left. Maurizio Lara moving to his left also with the two men right, on the, the, right in the middle of the boxing ring. Approaching the midpoint of this round, treble left jab thrown by, by Maurizio Lara, the final jab did get through. Double jab from Lee Wood, landed with a bent arm because Lara was coming forward. Lara initiates this exchange and scores with an up jab, but he's countered by a shot from Lee Wood. Beyond the midpoint of this ninth round now, but Maurizio Lara, strangely passive, strangely one pace, is an exchange of jabs to the head before Lara takes the left jab to the body and a thudding right cross which sends a shower of spray from his hair and Maurizio Lara not able to respond Lee Wood outboxing his man outworking his man and outthinking his man can he maintain this discipline with a minute remaining in the ninth round he must be leading by a considerable margin on the scorecard he at least is for my money remember the three scoring judges Howard Foster Vin Victor Simone and Jose Ignacio Martinez, how have they got it as we approach the hot, the 30 second to go mark of this ninth round? But Lara leaping with a left hook from beyond range, missing by a distance. There he does land with a left jab as 
Lee Wood was committing to a single shot attack of his own. Referee Steve Gray puts the man beyond punching range and now they're looking to edge their way back into range at centre ring. Beautiful boxing off the back foot from Lee Wood, spinning off to his left, landing a left jab. Lara trying to quicken his feet. There he lands a left-right combination and slams a left hand into the body. And it's a rally at the 10-second club from Maurizio Lara, which suggests he's trying to nick these rounds. I, I just believe Lee Wood here is boxing superbly. He's just taking a rest at the right times. And I'll be honest, a little bit disappointed Maurizio Lara. He's like struggled with the distance all night, whether that's down to the great footwork of Lee Wood, I really don't know. Listen, we can't rule him out because of the power he carries, but I think Lee Wood's in total control here. Well, all of a sudden, coming in overweight, you know, not being, not, not being the check way in, so doing nothing in the ring, really, to be honest, to put Lee Wood under any pressure. No, no, let's not take away with how well Lee Wood's boxing, but he's coming, I think, he's just going to walk us through with Lee Wood. That's what it looks like. He's turned up thinking, I guess, I'll just walk around, walk him down. When I land, he's going to go to sleep. That might still happen, but he's a mile behind, and Lee Wood looks stronger he needs than that to happen. last fight. He needs that to happen if he's to win this fight. So into the 10th round we go, Lee Wood from our perspective here ringside in complete control. Maurizio Lara tries to explode forward but he's put on the end of a stiff left jab once again. And Maurizio Lara, it's difficult to discern what his game plan is because he's trying to bob and weave his way into range but there's no dynamism, no urgency about his work. And Lee Wood is being allowed to control the pace, control the tempo. And remember, he made the weight of the featherweight limit of 126 pounds, weighing in at 125.9. There's a beautiful counter right hand once again on a slow motion forward foray from Maurizio Lara. He's intimating that he was hit low after another left jab scored to his body. Maurizio Lara blinking, peering over the top of his gloves. And I simply cannot believe how passive, how pacifist Maurizio Lara is here when trying to maintain his standing in the upper echelons of the featherweight or super featherweight division. It's a very strange display from the man who was the division's bogeyman for so long, coming over here, taking the O of Josh Warrington in violent fashion, turning a contest on its head when he dethroned Lee Wood down in Nottingham 98 days ago. But here, coming in overweight, he has looked off the pace, devoid of ideas, as he takes another right hand as he swung and missed by some distance with a big left hook. So, Lee, Lee Wood commanding this contest very effectively indeed. It's not as impressive a display as he produced for the first six rounds down in Nottingham. In many respects, he's turning this into what seems like an easier mission. And again, the only time Laura lets his hands go is when the two men fall into a clinch. There was a clash of heads, they locked arms. Maurizio Laura got his left hand free and scored with a left hook. Lee Wood operating behind a low held left hand, trying to lure that right hand lead from Maurizio Laura that he can counter. Fainting with his feet, tries a left right combination, was short of the mark, but used quick feet to get out of range before any counter could come from Maurizio Laura. The crowd dialing up their decibel level, cheering their support of Lee Wood. Maurizio Lara walks onto a counter right uppercut but then there's a clash of heads that follows because Lara's initial attack was made to miss because Lee Wood is using his feet magnificently playing Matador to the occasionally on-rushing ball who is Maurizio Lara and there he stopped in his tracks by an up jab from Lee Wood once again. He came up from his kneecap. There's a reverse one-two, right cross, left jab, and Mauricio Lara's feet are all over the place. They got in a tangle. He takes another tumble to the canvas, but Mauricio Lara, we've mentioned the fact that the soles of his black boxing boots appeared very narrow. And for my money, again, it's like he's boxing on rollerblades here. He's had difficulty with his footing all night. Big swing and a miss with a right hook from Lee Wood. Scoring jab to the body from Lee Wood. And again, Maurizio Lara trying that veteran's trick, that old man's trick of rallying on the 10-second clapper. But for my money, he's been outworked, outboxed, and outthought once again. It's, it's an easy night here for Lee Wood. All, all he's had to do, and it's not, that's not an easy thing, is keep that concentration level. But the threat is not as great as it was in the first fight, so there's no panic or, or, or any urgency that, of anything coming back to him. All he has to do is throw a long jab, and then when he retreats, when, when Lara comes forward, he takes two fast steps back, Lee Wood, and he's in a safe place. 
it's been, I've got to be honest, after, from the fifth, sixth round on, this has been quite an easy fight for Leewood. It's, it's hard to disagree with anything Barry said that. I think he's just controlled him with the lead hand, with the lead hand and his feet, because he's just not let, let Lara get anywhere near him, and it's strange. I know you keep saying it, Rod. The only time he really seems like his hands go, well, one, when he's way out of distance, and two, when they come up close in a bit of a clinch. It's, it's strange tactics from Lara, but Leewood's boxing very well. Into the championship rounds we go. Lee Wood boxing in his eighth scheduled 12 rounder tonight. He's never completed the 12 round championship distance. Maurizio Lara in his fourth scheduled 12 rounder tonight. He's not completed the 10, the 12 round championship distance either. The furthest he's been is 10 rounds in fight number 24 before Warrington. But here. He's going to have to do something drastic and dramatic in the final six minutes because he must be trailing by a country mile. I've given him a couple of rounds on my scorecard. But other than that, it's Lee Wood who has been in complete control as he continues to apply pressure with his presence. He's always a threat, is Lee Wood. He's just on the edge of range and he's fainting effectively. And occasionally he shoots out a left jab, which is solid and heavy and stiff. And it's stopping Maurizio Lara in his tracks. There he faints with the feet once again, just preventing Maurizio Lara from getting balanced and getting set to launch his her own heavy offense. Right hand lead from Lee Wood is blocked by the gloves of Maurizio Lara, but Maurizio Lara, well, he's not doing any scoring. Check left hand from Lee Wood, scoring without reply, then a left jab which caused him to hinge at the hip once again, landed by Lee Wood, as Maurizio Lara beaten to the jab once more, and it's Lee Wood continuing to control things beautifully, scoring left jab to the body, and Lee Wood is in complete control for my money. There's a treble left jab. Lara tried to counter as the heads clash violently on the inside once again. But Maurizio Lara is being completely kept at bay here. There he lands a single right hand, but Lee Wood untroubled by it. And again, it's Lee Wood's lead left hand that he's controlling the distance. There's an exchange of jabs, both of which were heavy, both men landing upstairs. Minute 10 remaining in this penultimate round. Lee Wood doing an outstanding job of remaining disciplined. His right hand now around his peck. His left hand dangling down by his quad and he scored with that darting left jab to the body of the man from Mexico once again. Mauricio Lara shaping with his hands now, almost working his right hand like Sugar Ray Leonard did in the rematch against Roberto Duran, but he didn't pull the trigger. Right hand lead from Lee Wood scored, but it was countered by an altogether heavier lead left from Mauricio Lara. But his success is few and far between as he tries a left hook once again, which slams against the forearm and peck of Lee Wood. Counter right hand lands by Lara. It was a counter to a left jab to the body from Lee Wood. 30 seconds remaining in his penultimate round. A right hand lead is a beautifully picked pot shot from Lee Wood, who continues to control proceedings magnificently. Scoring left jab from Maurizio Lara. He's heavy once again. It's just on the edge of range now. The men in the middle of the boxing ring but Maurizio Lara, well, it's looking as though he's putting all of his stock in landing a single knockout shot. On the 10-second clap, he quickens his feet once again, pulls two punches just above the belt line of Lee Wood, but that's surely not enough to take the round. We're going to go over before the 12th and final round to the corner of Lee Wood and listening to the instructions and advice from Ben Davison. Just three minutes of a round. All you need to do is keep them probes going, keep them under threat, not sit there waiting. When you drop and start, I've got to commit, yeah? If he does come out like a man, man. You see Ben there just he he keeping, keeping Lee Kang, keeping Lee Kang, giving really good advice. It's clear yeah. instructions, he knows just not to make any mistakes now. The fight's in the bag for him now. He's, he's three minutes away from regaining his world title. I think very smart instructions from them there. Just keep probing, giving Lara something to think about, which he struggled with all night. I believe Lee Wood has he's read everything Lara has come with tonight, and that's why he took very little punishment. So Lee Wood raises both arms to the rafters here at the Manchester Arena. Mauricio Lara didn't just want to touch gloves, he wanted to engage in an embrace. Lee Wood accommodated him, but now the action resumes. Mauricio Lara has surely got to find an inside the distance finish because he must be trailing by a massive distance on the scorecards of the three judges here. 
Heads clash violently as Maurizio Lari swinging away downstairs. Not particularly accurate. Not particularly accurate with his attempted combination. Right-left combination from Lee Wood, who surely is edging second by second, closer to becoming a two-time world champion. And Lara, my goodness, that was a bull rush, which had zero energy or zip behind it. Almost as though he's wading through treacle, it was easily evaded by Lee Wood, who just spun off the line and left Maurizio Lara peering over the top rope at figure, figure three on the clock face. Maurizio Lara not able to summon up any energy. We all thought that the weight advantage would be an advantage, coming in at 129.8 pounds, practically four pounds heavier than Lee Wood, but he's appeared ponderous, he's appeared sluggish, as he takes a beautifully picked right-hand lead, which swivels his head once again, and Lee Wood, one minute 50 seconds away from becoming a two-time world champion because Maurizio Lara has been controlled and subdued beautifully by the discipline display being produced by Lee Wood. There he skips back to just beyond punching range. The crowd dialing up the decibel level in support of Lee Wood. The man so used to fighting in that fortress of an arena down in Nottingham has come up the motorway here in Manchester in a bigger venue and has boxing out of his skin. He's completely nullified the ever-present threat of Maurizio Lara. We're just beyond the halfway stage of this final round and a beautiful check left hook on the counter from Lee Wood causes Maurizio Lara to totter backwards. Right hand slammed into the body of Maurizio Lara from Lee Wood. And it's Maurizio Lara keen to initiate a clinch. And he waved Steve Gray's hand out of the way when Steve Gray was trying to issue instructions. Steve Gray calls time and tells him in no uncertain terms. Remember, Steve Gray can give instructions in Spanish also. He's told him, pointed that index finger and said, I'm the referee, don't disrespect me like that. The action resumes, 40 seconds remaining. And Lee Wood takes the left jab. Mauricio Lara with a crude two-shot assault to the body afterwards. But Lee, Ra Lee Wood cutting such a composed figure up there in the boxing ring. And Maurizio Lara, well, he has got to uncall the type of left hook that saw him prevail in their first contest. 20 seconds remaining. And now Lee Wood just has to avoid to walking on walking onto anything calamitous from his point of view. The crowd know it. They're all up on their feet, counting down what has been a masterful boxing display from Lee Wood. Mauricio Lara with his last roll of the dice, launch of the right cross, which is off the mark. And there is the bell to conclude what has been a veritable boxing masterclass from Lee Wood. He sprints back to his blue corner and climbs the turnbuckle before heading back down to earth, back to the ring canvas, with embraced by Ben Davison and his promoter, Eddie Hearn. Ben Davison makes his way over to the red corner to exchange salutations with Maurizio Lara. But on a night where Lee Wood was the only boxer who could win the title, he has kept his concentration magnificently and completely controlled the marauding Bronco from Mexico. Mauricio Lara not allowed to get into this contest and Lee Wood is surely, surely the winner and the two-time WBA featherweight champion of the world. There's one word to describe that performance, that's discipline. He never got he never got drunk on his own success. He worked behind the jab. They obviously had a plan about staying safe at all times, even when you had success, even when you did good work, not going back in straight lines, always changing direction, fainting, and but always behind a solid jab. And everything he did was behind that left hand. Discipline won him the fight tonight. Fantastic performance. I think Barry's just covered so much of it there. Well, that's what it was. This point, it's pretty. Lee Wood sat in the corner here now. I think he's picked an injury up late on here. I, I can't figure out what it is. But it was, and I just thought his lead hand tonight was fantastic. Not just his lead hand, his feet, his little lay back right hand. I thought the uppercut worked well for him, which resulted in the knockdown. I just thought all round, it's a fantastic performance. And before the fight, I said how I felt sorry for both him and Ben Davidson and the team. They deserve huge credit for that performance. Obviously, Lee Wood himself, but that was so disciplined. Great game plan. And I believe Richard Lara had very little success. And it feels because of what happened before the fight with Lara, you no, know, not making the check way in, which he would have known about, of course. Like a bit of justice. Yes. As well. Like the right sure. man won, the man who made the effort to make the weight, the man who came in on, did all the things you have to do as a professional fighter. 
and then perform in the ring. You mean, yeah, he performed in the ring. You won. Look, and also, this is a risky fight to take. This is a stupid fight to take in many ways. So, so close so after as well. Yeah, so close after it, you know. And you boxed so well, but you still and, and didn't make any mistakes. But still got knocked out. But he got it right tonight. He, he was so disciplined, so focused. It was a fantastic performance. Well, David Diamante is in position in the center of the boxing ring. Lee Wood is circling the counter circling the ring in a counterclockwise fashion fashion he is wearing the sombrero that Maurizio Lara gifted to him and that remained in his peripheral vision throughout every day of the training camp he said it's a reminder whenever he was feeling fatigue whenever he was getting tired of what the man from Mexico did to him in their first fight he wore the hat to the ring as a mark of respect and here he is donning it now. Ladies Let's get the official verdict. After 12 rounds of action here in Manchester, England, we go to the judges' scorecards. Howard Foster and Victor Simon both scored about 118 to 109. Jose Ignacio Martinez, 116 to 111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision and the new WBA featherweight champion of the world lethal Lee Wood so Lee Wood raised his arm in anticipation of the announcement because he knew that he was about to be proclaimed as the winner and two-time WBA featherweight champion of the world. He stretches out both arms wide to have that WBA strap placed around his waist once again. A beautifully disciplined, concentrated display. And now he's circling the boxing ring before climbing the turnbuckle in his own blue corner with that WBA strap back around his waist once again. The red sombrero gifted to him by Maurizio Lara is atop his head. Maurizio Lara has beat a hasty retreat from the boxing ring, but not before I hasten to add the two men exchange a sporting embrace and warm words in the red corner just above us. But this moment belongs to Lee Wood and his team, including Ben Davison, because the game plan was spot on and it was perfectly executed by Lee Wood, who has boxed his way brilliantly to a unanimous points decision victory to become a two-time WBA featherweight champion of the world. He joined a very elite club, a very elite club in becoming a two-time um, two world champion. And now for me, Lee Wood, these unifications, obviously, there's a small fight that could take place at a football stadium, and that's Josh Warrington. I know both lads really want that. Wait, which stadium, though, eh? Oh, wow. I'm, well, not, hey, I'm not getting myself in trouble. Well, hold on. Lee Wood, the champion, surely he'll be calling the shots, and he wants so badly to box at the city ground. Remember, his fellow Nottingham man, the man who came from the same boxing club in Gedling, Carl Froch is here ringside. He was the king of Nottingham, topping the bill numerous times at the Nottingham Arena, but he never boxed at the city ground in front of his beloved Nottingham Forest faithful. That's what Lee Wood wants to do. He and Josh Warrington sell a ticket. We've been to Ellen Road already. Surely if that contest takes place, it'll be in Nottingham Forest city ground on the banks of the River Trent. Well, all, all the cards in the favour of Lee Wood right now, aren't they? And, and rightly so after that performance as well. And also beating the man that beat Warrington as well. And he beat the man that beat him as well. But also, you know, do, doing such a fantastic job in the return. Because it wasn't, he, didn't, he didn't win a fight close. He went clear. There's always a comical... No, the judges score a card in every fight that seems to be recently and 116-111 might be another one of those I couldn't see how it was even that remotely that close but it was a fa fantastic performance it was a poor performance from Lara but let's, not, let's, let's give all the credit to, to Lee Wood how disciplined, how focused he was and, and as, as Anthony kept saying from early on the footwork and the jab were fantastic yeah, I just think now I think that's lad there who took made a very brave decision him and his team to go ahead with this fight where a lot of people went against it and he's just proved a lot of them wrong and listen the team obviously knows him better than anyone the belief he had i could not believe the self-belief he had after you know suffering that big knockout and i just think 
I, I couldn't, I was thinking, there's no way he's acting it. It was genuine, and from that, I fancied him, but the weight was a huge worry. It was a huge worry, but it just didn't, Lara didn't look any better for it, did he? I tell you what, though, there were some there were some signs that he didn't look any better at all. And if anything, he looked lethargic tonight. And that's, that, and that's usually a sign of not making the weight right. He never made the weight at all, of course, but maybe it was a bigger struggle than what we thought to just get down to where he did. But what I would say is, how, like, how focused um, Wood was, because he got caught a few times early in that round, early in the fight, and that can bring home, bring back memories, ghosts of the of, of the last knockdown. And he never phased him; he just regrouped, and he has that, he has that a real quality that he can recover quick when he's hurt. So he got buzzed a few times, didn't panic, recovered really quick. But then after like five or six rounds, he was so focused, didn't engage once, didn't get too close. And when Lara did jump in with his with his crew that attacked, he just tied him up. I think it was a, it was the probably the Kanzu fight was was is coming out party at world level, but that in many ways because of the risk the factor attached to it was his best performance for me. Terrific performance produced by Lee Wood, and in a red hot 126 pound nine stone featherweight division, we've got the WBO boss Robbie C. Ramirez, the two-time Olympic champion who just beat Isaac Dogbo to claim that WBO crown at the start of April. Luis Alberto Lopez, who defended his IBF title tonight at the expense of Belfast Michael Conlin in Belfast. Maurizio Lara, well, he's going to move up to past as a new because the WBA king is Lee Wood. And then we've got Ray Vargas, who despite losing to Osha Key Foster at the Alamo Dome up at super featherweight, is still the WBC featherweight champion of the world. Lee Wood in the mix with all of those big names at the nine stone featherweight limit and of course josh warrington the former ibf kingpin those two will bring legions of their fans to whichever football stadium it takes place in we're waiting to get a chat with the winner and once again world champion maurizio lara we'll also try and get a chat with eddie hearn as well to talk about what those future plans may be but what was the most impressive aspect of Lee Wood's victory for you tonight, Anthony. Barry covered it. The discipline, the focus. It's hard to say just one thing because I mentioned a few times about his lead hand work, his feet. But all in all, like Barry said, one word to sum up that performance discipline. It's impossible to go through 12 rounds without making any mistakes. The, the mental, we talked about this before the fight, how, mental, how physically draining the concentration is. And, the, and he kept that for 12 rounds. So he, even the even times when Lara did that with a few heavy shots, again, just not to panic, not to let it in, in, no, get inside your head and start making silly mistakes. He kept his shape throughout every round of that fight, and, and, that, and that's what won it for him. And he was busier. Let's not forget, he was busier. He tried to make Lara work harder early on in the fight, which I think he did. And Lara did, did seem poor, but you have to say, you know, what made him look poor? You have to, you have to, was Lara hesitant? coming in and having that with because he fell a few shots he definitely fell a few shots tonight Lara didn't he the way Wood was stepping behind those jabs when Lara was yeah. walking onto him as well you feel those shots Absolutely. and those and I'd say what Lara did get hurt a few times to the temple with yeah. the right hand from, from Lee Wood if you can it's very hard to pick mistakes on that performance from Lee Wood and when you can say that in a 12 round fight with the risk of factor of, of how hard the Lara can hit that's a really impressive display it really is so Maurizio Lara sees his record fall to 26 wins and three losses along with that one technical decision. His winning streak comes to an end and the man was appeared to, made to appear not just mortal but ordinary tonight. His ever-present threat completely neutralized by the high IQ boxing of Lee Wood. He's posing with his entire team up in the center of the boxing ring for the photographers here at ringside. He is all smiles. I think he's smiling through a, tear, a few tears of joy there as well. Manvir Rai is poised to pick up a post-fight interview. But Lee Wood basking in these celebrations, and why not? But here comes Lee Wood. He's got a Nottingham Forest scarf around his neck, the WBA strap around his waist. He's just given us a thumbs up ringside, and Manvir Rai is in position to get his post-fight thoughts. Manvir, it's over to you. Lee Wood, two-time world champion. How good does that sound? It's amazing, you know, and um, there's only one thing, like I said, that's going to top it, and that's the home defence um, at the city ground. And I'm sure it's either going to be next or the one after. Um, unbelievable night, and it's not sunk in yet, but um, it's a massive thank you to all the travelling fans made it a night to remember. Can you put into words how special this moment is, Lee? 
Not yet. Um, it's still, like I said, it's sinking in, but um, I heard the crowd. They picked me up. They got me through, especially in that last round. You know, um, you know, um, two-time world champion. It's going to take time. Our commentary team was just saying how disciplined you were tonight. Were you a little bit surprised with Maurizio Lara's performance? It's as we expected. I should have done that the first time round. It's a tricky fight. Oh, if you switch off for a second, you'll have your lights out. So I knew I had to remain disciplined for that. Like I said, the crowd in the last round really kept me down, got me down the home stretch. And yesterday, with regards to the weigh-in, did that distract you in any way, or were you just so focused on getting the job done tonight? It could have come in 10 pounds, it wouldn't have mattered. Honestly, I was so focused, so driven, and I'm never, never going to fail tonight, no matter what. So you mentioned the city ground pretty much in your first sentence. Is that what's next for you? Hopefully. I hope so. And finally, Lee, how are you going to celebrate tonight? I can't wait to uh, have a bit of food, have a pizza, and go see my kids tomorrow. You know, um, I've spent a lot of time away from home, away from Nottingham in Essex training. I miss out on valuable time with my family and friends, so I'm going to catch up with everyone. Congratulations, Lee. Well done, mate. Back to you, Ron. So, Manville Wright getting the post-fight thoughts of Lee Wood, who wants to enjoy a pizza and some time with his family. And why not? Because you fighters, especially when you reach it to world title level, it is the ardour, the rigour of training that keeps you on top. And he knows all about that. Away from home, in Essex, keeping that sombrero in his peripheral vision. He really got it spot on and executed tonight. And that makes all the sacrifices worth it. But the sacrifices are tough because you've got to remember, we've spoken about how quick the turnaround was from the rematch. So of the last six months, he's probably seen very little of his family. And like I said, you miss valuable time with your kids growing up. And it's hard, but you like to believe you're making these sacrifices, sort of give them a better life. And with performances like that, he's absolutely going to do that. And those kids are going to go up in his family. And um, I think... Carl won't mind me saying this. Tomorrow we'll certainly be the pride of Nottingham. <laughs> you can tell Carl Frost. I'm not going to tell him that. But you have to be. It's a selfish sport. You can't think of anyone else but yourself in the build-up to the fight and while the fight's going on because it's such a dangerous sport. You can't afford to make mistakes. So you have to be selfish. But the end game is you reap the rewards and your family financially, hopefully, reap those rewards also with you. Well, it's been a magnificent night here in Manchester. Lee Wood has produced a boxing masterclass to become the winner and two-time WBA featherweight champion of the world. For our world champions, Anthony Crawler and Barry Jones, our ringside reporter, Manville Wright, and producer, Patrick Whiteside, from me, Ronald McIntosh, it's bye for now. The Voice of the UK. This is BBC Radio 5 Live.